controversial subjects with the facts can be tense. But we are a sub science here to make things make sense. So I don't know how honest you're gonna be. Oh, about what? Your... Greg likes to think that I was in a cult and a commune. Is this where you're getting at? Mitch was in a cult. Well, let's start off by okay. just. <laughs> I want to say as we jump into this, like especially the commune part of it, but I guess even the cultish aspect. Doing this research, I was like, wow, there actually is so much to this, and I yes. think it will be challenging for us to encompass everything because so many communes and cults exist through like currently and also through history with so many variable like elements and so obviously we'll do our best to kind of like give an overview of it but i was just like a this is so fascinating b so fascinating. there's so many angles we could tackle this from but there's not that much scientific or psychological research which fair. is like what i was looking at yeah yeah fair but um, you're right like the stories are almost endless about people attempting and it's hard to like clump them all together because some of them are started for entirely different purposes Okay. So, like, even from a scientific perspective, you're not necessarily studying the same kind of group of people. Yes, but, um, but one thing I... Okay, do you want to go first? One thing I want to say is about the differentiation between commune and cult, which I thought was fascinating. Yeah, go for it. So, commune, a group of people living together and sharing possessions and responsibilities, also known as an intentional community. Yes, which intentional community is actually what most people in communes prefer to be called because I think the term commune was sort of has been stuck with like... Oh yeah, when I picture commune, I picture a bunch of white weirdos <laughs> living like in a rural area like with like dreads and like... Yeah, there's an association and a lot of times even like drugs or sex or like yeah. there's lots of associations from like the 70s and stuff that a lot of current day communes like to be called intentional communities. And if someone was like, oh, I'm in an intentional community, I'd be like, tell me more and can I join? Yeah. Okay, cult. A cult is very similar, but it's when the group of people share a delusion. Oh. So that's what differentiates a cult from a commune is that there is a delusional aspect from a psychological perspective where they're believing something that isn't delusional. Okay. Which I thought was so interesting. Yeah. Because it actually is. And then they so start to... So most cults, though, then probably think they're intentional communities. But no, from okay, the outside I, in, people Not make. necessarily, but it's like I was reading a New York article about someone who grew up on a quote-unquote cult. Mm -hmm. And actually, she, her whole thesis of her article was very interesting. It was about how her interpretation as a kid, even into her early 20s before her mom like left the cult, she loved it so much and she saw no flaws in it. Mm -hmm. And then only upon reflection, like when she went to the outside world, did she see, oh, in fact, there were all these issues and yeah. there was delusion. And the delusion uh -huh. was that they actually all thought they were going to be going to Venus, that aliens were going to come pick them up and take them to live on Venus. But outside of that story being told by this main man, until she sort of reflected on some other bad things, she was like, it was just an intentional community. Mm. But because it was based on the delusion of the fact that they were all going to get abducted and go to Venus on like May 9th to 2022, right. that's what made it a call. Because other okay. than that, they were just kind of living together and like, off grid vibes. Yeah, but I'm sure that element of that prophecy must have guided their behavior. I think it's also different when you it, it grow did, it up did. in one versus when you join one because if you're a kid, you have no other context. Like, obviously, after she left it, she was able to see the greater world. Whereas it's maybe another thing as an adult to join an intentional community or a cult because you've had perspective from the outside world of what they think. Yes. Versus a kid, of course, can be raised almost any way not knowing any better and thinking that's all of of reality but i think it's so helpful to know that a cult is involves delusion it's like that show mm. like mother god right like yeah. take very away the fact beliefs. that she's saying she's mother god which is delusional and all of the like medical delusion it's 12 people if they're they, trying to live just together, trying to live together and like live and off the land and not need like be yes, removed from the rest of society it's an intentional community as soon as she's like i'm mother god and i'm talking to like <laughs> like all these like celebrities in the sky like and it, aliens Elvis. are always coming to get them it was robin williams oh yeah it's like de that delusion is when you start to define it from a psychologist psychologist go okay that's a call i mean hot controversial take not to I offend know. anyone but some people would argue that religions yes. are cults um, and people in different religions would be like well that's a cult but mine's not so yeah so for that reason in this article psychologists did say again too much controversy because there is no proof of heaven or hell or Jesus being the son of God by mm -hmm. definition 
that is considered a delusion and it is in theory a cult right. which is just like but i think boy. i do think what it, we're canceled I, no 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 we're Get just it. having a conversation okay <laughs> Every, you're allowed to believe what also i'm just like delusion like you everyone listening is a strict christian i'm like okay i, I know it. like they, why our audience yeah. is suddenly fundamental i know like, like they have like <laughs> tapped out when we were like anal sex this is how the dick goes in the sphincter <laughs> oh my god um i was going to say i think there's a threshold where a cult becomes more of a mainstream religion and we've seen some uh communities whether that's like scientology or what is the other one called but still based on delusion yeah but what i'm saying is those become big enough that then we just call them like a form of religion yeah, yeah, yeah. and like True. i think that happens when something's around long enough even um uh, like Mormonism and stuff. Like they're based in some other religions. Yeah, you're right. We're like, but it's like once they're popular enough, we no longer call them cults. Yeah, like the guy ran and was like, I read a bunch of plates. And they're like, show me the plates. And he's like, I lost them. It's like, <laughs> yeah. that's delusion. But then it's like, okay, now there's so many people yeah. that you're like, it's great musical though. Yeah. Um, I was going to say that some of the first examples in history that we have of cults are called ashrams. It's like, Wait, cults or communes? A communes, sorry. Yeah, this is like, like um, <laughs> an example of intentional communities. So it was like a spiritual monastery in Indian religions. And this was around like 1500 BCE. We have evidence of these forming. But there's also examples like Buddhist monasteries in 500 BC. Um, I didn't know this, but Pythagoras, like famously creator yeah. of Pythagorean theorem, founded an intellectual vegetarian commune in 525 BC. It's like Pythagoras. In southern Pi Italy. Pythagoras was was obviously queer <laughs> and definitely hung out with like a bunch of lesbians and did math. I, but honestly, that is a really cool one. The Pyth I was reading yeah. that one. They like actually would just do math all day and like share like and eat vegetables. Yeah, I was like, okay, so queer ass like, math commune, like fun. Sign me up. Yeah. Um, and you're like, that's 2,500 years ago. That's so cool. Well, I don't know. There's something about communes that to me are giving like older times than now. Yeah, you're right. Maybe it was the, like easier I, to not have judgment from the outside because it's only like the people who want to be part of it. And you couldn't it. judge them. They're not posting a photo. You're just like, exactly. oh, I heard someone down the lane over the hill is like living <laughs> with 15 people doing math. It's like yeah. no one's like cares. <laughs> but also I like there's so much cool stuff I want to get into. But one thing about this like nuclear family to buy parental home like suburb mm -hmm. like white picket fence is extremely new and extremely Christian and extremely rooted in capitalism, which is like, yep. I do think of communes as like, it's not surprising to me that like 525 BC, there's a commune. You know what I mean? Like to yeah. me, the lack of communes is more like now vibes. The uh, I see what you're yeah, like yeah. to me, it's not like well because we've also like as the human scale has skyrocketed, obviously in the last like thousands of years, um, the. I don't know where I was going with that. But <laughs> You're just ending no, that. I'm just saying so like we're so just much more interconnected dark. like globally that it probably in some ways makes it more difficult for communes to exist. But at the same time, we're connected by the internet where people probably create and find people who would be interested in similar things to create communes. But I don't know. Obviously, like the world has changed so much. Yeah. One thing this person who wrote about her cult experience said was that there are a lot of cults and communes that exist right now, but when they don't end in like mass death, we don't hear about them. Right. Like they just her exist commune is like really like, like still exists. They have like a construction company in like San Diego and mm -hmm. it's like, it's going, sorry, her cult. Cause they are still like thinking they're going to get adopted by the aliens. <laughs> Is still existing, but the only reason we know about it is because I read this article because no one has like died on mass yet. Yeah. And so like we like there are a lot of cults and a lot of communes around right now, but there's no reason for us to know about them because people don't really Unless you're care. looking. Yeah. Yeah. And also this was uh something I read. The reason that humans are susceptible to cults, not communes. So this is the delusion of living in groups with like thinking something crazy is gonna happen. Yeah. Humans understand the world by narratives. However, much we flatter ourselves about our individual rationality, a good story, no matter how analytically deficient, lingers in the mind, resonates emotionally, and persuades more than the most disp dispositive facts or data. Mm -hmm. So just like, you can see how people get into these delusional groups. Yeah, it's, as it's fun humans. to believe in something. Yeah. You know what I mean? It gives you a sense of direction and purpose and hope and meaning. Like. 
like a commune or an intentional community without a belief system. I mean, the belief system, maybe we just want to support each other and live a life that's not tied to capitalism or something like that. But when you get into sort of like the religious or spiritual or afterlife meaning, it gives people a sense of purpose, I think, a lot of times, as does religion, as does like many other things. This um, was also such a cool study I found, which was that the opinions of crowds when not delusional are actually useful. And it was a series of studies, two of them, that got average people, for example, to guess the weight of an ox by looking at it. Mm -hmm. And then they brought in an expert, like an expert butcher to guess the weight. And on average, a group of average people have a more accurate guess than an expert. Where Did you hear that somewhere recently? Like on no, I just said I read it. No, I know, but I, I didn't hear this ox example, but I was just listening to, it must have been like a Hidden Brain episode or a Happiness Lab. Yeah, there's a more recent example. That was really cool. That I'm just like, oh, this is so cool because I listened to this too. And it was like even your own, even within an individual, when you make guesses on one day and then another day, it's like the average of your guesses of things is usually more accurate than either individual guess. Yeah, this was, I thought that was cool. not one person, but, but how a group of people. Can, and it yeah. was saying like, yeah, like groups of people's opinions are it can be actually powerful, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. It can be a useful yes. metric to And use. like that obviously leads to like, a democracy yeah yeah, oh, yeah, it yeah, can. yeah that's like an idea yeah. of democracy yeah. right it's like we as a community as a large community can make better decisions if we are voting because like no one of us knows the right answer but if together we like vote yeah yeah that, it is interesting is democracy a commune <laughs> <laughs> i like i mean like yeah kind of um going back to intentional communities some of the core principles that have been like scholarly or written about are egalitarianism so just like rejecting hierarchy um, a big part of it was like addressing human scale so especially like through the industrial A's r realizing that like it right. our capitalism is like unsympathetic to these massive numbers of humans yeah um, and so like to make smaller groups allows us to actually oh, yeah. see individual it's humans like oh more. my god they just literally picked so many strawberries today. I appreciate that yum yum strawberry yeah exactly and it's just like <laughs> everything's like factory or whatever and then um, the other principle was consciously anti-bureaucratic um, what does that mean so like bureaucratic is like choosing things through group um, no, it would be like unelected officials making decisions. Oh, consciously anti-bureaucratic. Yeah, anti-bureaucratic. So it's like, no, we're going to like vote together. Yeah. And so that, that comes back down to like so many communities focus on the collective, which I think is part of the reason it can also become a really big challenge. A lot of communities struggle and don't make it very long. Um, but those de that definition was later updated more recently. Um, as you said, like to focus on the group instead of the nuclear family. So like you actually, instead of caring about your family, you care about the group just as much, which is usually around 20 people in most communities. Wait, in um, intentional communities? In intentional communities. Oh. Um, yeah, it's much smaller than I thought. Like most intentional communities, I think like the communes. biggest ones or communes might have like 100, but a lot could just be like 15 people huh. or 25 people. Um, they often have a common purse, so they're sharing their monies. Uh, collective wholesale household and they uh, make decisions as a group. Do you so want to go into that person's critique of it? Because I feel like this is sounding really like what person's easy. critique of it? The oh. email. Oh, yeah. I'll read so it because someone it's like, there's something a while there back sent us. Um, I'm going to read a comment. It wasn't a voice note, but they sent but it as from a message. Hope. This is from Hope. She or they say, I tried the commune thing. I think the only way it works is if it's a cult, unfortunately. Mine broke away from one to begin with, but there are just too many decisions that everyone had to agree on, not to mention the interpersonal stuff, like Mitch said, about just adding even one person to a couple. Like we had talked about in our threesome or thruple. Thruple episode, like an extra person can make us complicated. Back to this message from Hope. If it's a cult and everyone agrees to follow one person, that's the <laughs> only way to not spend most of your day in like shitty meetings, at least in the US. Maybe Canadians are more agreeable, but I don't think so. I think what you're talking about is just community, just kind of normal human decency or what it's like in rural areas. It does... It does sound ideal, but I just don't know if it can happen. Okay, well, coming in with the like negativity. No, no, no that's not negativity. I think no, that's, but like, it's like maybe realism, especially if they've experienced it. Like it is 
to have to have a group decision about every single thing would be exhausting, would take a lot of time. But everything you're saying with the core principles of communes are trying to fight against there being the one leader who's totally. the call. Yeah. So it is kind of interesting. It's making you question just, I thought it was a good time for it because we were going through like, oh, it all sounds so rosy. Yeah, and I'll in a bit bring up like one of the longest running non-religious cults I want to talk about. Um, but I was watching some interviews and like documentary spots about them and they're commune or community addresses that like capitalism has won the culture at least in today's age the culture wars literally and that like you can't <laughs> exist true. outside of it and so they are aware that despite wanting to create a community that can like escape some of that they still use capitalism as a means to survive yeah so a lot of communes from one study I was reading struggle with the comp competition against the greater market because a lot of communes back in the day when capitalism was taking off would be like, okay, we're all going to live together and we're going to make like a stove, for example, and sell the stove. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden capitalism comes in, sweatshops, they, right. no one's like, buying their expensive stove. Yeah. yeah. And so then they, they actually fall apart because they're like, there is a How lot. How do you survive? And a lot of other communes, what would happen is, as you said, collective purse, someone would go out, be a doctor and get paid mm -hmm. a bunch of money and come back and have to give all their money to the commune. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they start to get frustrated because they're paying more money. Mm -hmm. So if the commune's trying to exist on selling something, it can't compete with yeah. capitalism and then it falls apart. Like I thought that was interesting. It's like communes are anti-capitalist in many ways. And there are some thoughts about how conservative people bring up this idea of the like loss of the nuclear family. And the reason conservatives are so scared of it is because if like wide networks come together and like work together, the economic productivity will go down. So like essentially communes, like if you are on a commune, you're not necessarily going to be working nine to five as you mm. would be in like your nuclear household trying to support your two kids. Okay. Is like an idea of why the nuclear family is scary to conservatives. I thought like conservatives like the nuclear family. Do you mean the exactly. idea of community? Sorry, the idea of the loss of the nuclear family uh, is, scary, yeah. is scary to conservatives. I mean, it's interesting Sorry. because we're obviously in an age where a lot of people are feeling at a loss for like, like inflation and the expense of living, whether that be just even renting or basic necessity of food and starting to challenge this. Like, more than ever, especially young people are challenging like the benefits and idea of capitalism when some people are getting away with billions and so many people are struggling to even survive. So I would be interested to know if more and more people are looking to something like intentional communities, but it's how can those communities exist without interfacing with a capitalist society? Okay, so this is another thing I thought was so cool from my research is that like mostly everyone has lived in an intentional community if they're a student or in their mm. early 20s. And it was like, that's what living with roommates is in a flat. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, like we lived with roommates until we were 29. Yeah. That is considered an intentional community. You're sharing resources. a smaller home. You're sharing resources. You're living in your separate rooms. Maybe even you're sharing rooms. Mm -hmm. You sh like in, we would end up sharing so much of our resources and our yeah. income through food, through entertainment. Yeah, because it doesn't make sense for everyone to buy their own butter. You know, it's like, okay, yeah. we'll figure out a, a solution to like share our resources so to buy one butter. <laughs> yeah, like one butter, one margarine. They said that from the ages of like essentially like, let's think of like the quintessential American life. From like 18 till 26 or 27, you're living in an intentional community, most likely. You're not affording to live alone. Right. Then when you become really old, you go to a retirement home and mm. that's also a form of communal living. And they said what's so sad for right now is that when people isolate themselves is when they start their families, when they need communal community the most. So like, like when you're like, you said when you're starting a family. Yeah. That's uh, like quote unquote right. what the American life is. It's like you find yeah, your partner, you, you go to your like suburban in many ways, mm -hmm. like white picket fence. Like you buy property with a lot of land yeah. to keep people away yeah. and you raise your kids by parentally. So two parents on potentially right. one, two, one to four kids. Yeah. That's when you need the most help. Mm -hmm. And it's when you isolate yourselves the most, which I thought was like so interesting. And that's what they were kind of talking was like about was like the importance of community in the time when you're becoming a new parent, how it can even fracture relationships, mm -hmm. how important grandparents are, uncles, like you need that wider circle, but in many ways, people aren't getting that. And then now more than ever, if you live in the suburbs, they're driving in their isolated cars into yeah. the city or they're working from home. Yeah, this like isolation is like, internet. yeah. And yeah. it's like, oh my God. So anyway, there's like very 
pro com- communal living. Yeah, I think like most people inherently understand and feel that being part of a community is nice and special, but obviously it takes work to maintain, right? Like a lot of yeah. people are part of communities, but those communities require leaders or organizers or like financial support, whether that's like even just like a church group or something totally non-religious that might just be like a a league of, of like playing sports, you know, like that's a yeah. community group, but it requires people to help organize they, it. They were even mentioning the loss of religion in that same breath about the like new suburban American life. Yeah. There's a loss of religion, which like, always was in Wonder some ways an why. asset to community like why we, is it totally capitalist fault that's what they were saying they were like capitalism makes you it do forces that. us to isolate okay so another thing they talked about was esteem which was that like we are so obsessed with other mm. people esteeming us yeah like, is that the word to be, yeah to feel sounded like, like a steamy shit which is not <laughs> what i'm trying to say like we want esteem and through our society and capitalism esteem comes from a big house yeah a nice car sorry this is not what i think but right. this is what in general people think like influencer culture all this stuff esteem right. is being able to having a afford, lot yeah. to have a lot to have kids to have help to look after your kids like in the form of like a nanny as opposed to like family, a big house, a nice car, Mm -hmm. a good job. And that's what's motivating people right now as opposed to what they were arguing, which was like esteem could also be judged by being a member of a community, Mm -hmm. a good person, like a nice person, a social, like it was kind of interesting because I was like, that is true. Like when I think about our friends right now, like building their lives, they're wanting money in order to get things that isolate them. Yeah. Like a, like truly like a, like a house, like a single family home. I think there's like, obviously this is interplaying with just like the way society is built right now. There's, there's clearly a level of fear in not having enough, right? There's a human condition to like take what you can while you can because of the worry that you won't have it later. And this idea of being self-sufficient is maybe related to esteem. Like if I can do it all myself, I don't need <laughs> anyone's help. How impressive is that? Like, oh, everyone else is relying, but I'm able to just like get everything I need by myself. Ew, it's so provide. depressing. Yeah, it, it is. Sounds you, so realize, negative. Yeah. you realize that like, it, it, we're all not, we're all, but like many people are chasing this idea. Not, not nefariously. I don't think like people don't stop necessarily to think about what it will feel like when they've done that. But I understand there is like a human emotion of maybe like fearing not having enough. Yes. And like and stockpiling. It leads you to isolate. And this is the only yeah. explanation for why billionaires can like hold on to so much money. Yeah. Because somehow they've become numb to the idea that Delusional. They can lose it all. Yeah. Um, <coughs> yeah. So one other thing I wanted to talk about was rituals. This is again me just going, oh, are we what are we good for just, time? Yeah. I'm just always like checking to be like, is it still recording? Okay. Okay. I'm like, you always look at him that freaks me out. It used to be like more beside us so I could just glance, but okay. now I'm always no, like, yeah, I'm like, he's always looking over his shoulder. I'm, I'm like, paranoid that, the, that we're not recording. Um, rituals are a key part of cults and communes. And this was just, again, me trying to find actual scientific data on this thing. That's like mostly just like stories, mm-hmm. but they said rituals will change based on the size of the group that is created, whether it's a cult or a commune. So simple routine actions are key to large groups like religions and nations. So routine actions such as prayers at church, mosque or synagogue, daily pledge of allegiance, like in the U S like elementary schools are rituals operate operating in something known as the doctrinal mode. These rituals, which are easily transmitted to children and strangers, are well-suited for large groups and are what forge religion, cities, or nations. Broad-based communities that do not depend on face-to-face contact. So those are like rituals that are like kind of like passive. Mm -hmm. Whereas traumatic rituals lead to small group connections and cults. Traumatic rituals. Yes. So like they found that like by studying a bunch of different cults and communes and even nations, et cetera, rare traumatic activities such as beating, self-mutilation or abuse. As as intentional rituals. Yes. Are intentional rituals that operate in something called an imaginistic mode. Traumatic rituals create strong bonds among those who experience them together, which makes them especially suited for creating small, intensely committed groups such as cults or military Mm. platoons. Mm. So then they studied 645 rituals across 74 cultures, and as predicted, they they found that the rituals fell into two clusters, high-frequency, low-arousal doctrinal rituals like prayer, 
Pledge of Allegiance, which were established in large communities and low frequency, high arousal, abusive and majestic varieties that were common in societies that are smaller, such as cults. So it's like there mm. is an actual like, again, cults are by definition based on a delusion. Yeah. But then there's also this like, like we do hear it so much. There's so much abuse happening mm -hmm. in all these cult documentaries and things. And it's actually a way of them creating rituals that keep people like, almost in them. connect them. Yeah. So trauma. it's like, as much as we're talking about communes, there's such a nefarious, scary yeah. thing. Yeah. Like that's lying in the rituals of yeah, creating even, that. Yeah. Even <laughs> if like a community is started with the best of intention, like it is within the human capacity to do such awful things and people to desire power and structure yes. the way that they want it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's spooky. It makes sense where you're like, yeah, of course trauma can bond people when they've gone through it together and connect them and needing to find like justification for those things, right? Yeah. Like why have I gone through this? It must be for a greater reason, but yeah, it's spooky. I mean, I do think ritual so interesting. Like the nice thing about ritual obviously not traumatic ritual but like a is, coffee in the morning yeah or like whether it's prayer whether it's like having a community group like or whether it's like church like things you do without having to think about them like yeah they're baked into your life because the hardest most annoying thing especially for me as you know is like deciding what to eat for lunch um so it's like when you just have something in place oh my god you need rituals i know you're so, oh my <laughs> god because you are so like you do self-identify as someone who wants to be in a cult slash commune and it's like is it because they'll decide things like for you? literally that is why <laughs> yeah there's like some famous proverb that alan once talks about that's like there's like this um farm person who hires a guy who's so good at doing everything he like gets him to fix fences and he like does it in a day and he's like oh my god you're so good okay can you like go make this thing and he does it in a day and he's like wow and then he asks him to like actually go and check on the eggs and then each egg you have to see if it's like good enough and then put it in the basket if it's bad you throw it out and then the guy quits after a day and he's like you can't quit what's wrong and then the guy's like it's just decision after decision after decision after decision like he loved to just make things and do things without being told to what to do yeah it's just like oh just building a fence isn't making a lot of decisions but it's exhausting to have to constantly Mitch, make decisions are you in, like <laughs> Mitch is like kind of struggling right now and I'm like you're in a life with zero with, on, with only decisions. I know. No, I hate like there's it. you don't have a boss. You don't have anyone telling you what to do except I for me, and you know. don't want to listen to me. <laughs> I know. I oh know. my god. No, I'm just like it's interesting because I do. I kind of like. I'm. I, I'm definitely not cult vibes. I'm scared of. I, I love making decisions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm like. I am definitely like. I don't necessarily resonate. Like, yeah. No. You're with that really, proverb. Whereas you, you remember are that proverb. A convergent thinker. Um, what does that mean? So like I'm a divergent thinker, which means like I like overanalyze every single thing, yeah. right? Like I'm going to think about all the different ways yeah. something can happen and it provides me stress to converge my thoughts and make a decision. Okay. Whereas for a convergent thinker, it's like you're good at just being like, dude, dude, but it provides you stress to over. Oh my things. God. And these are the two different 1, kinds of 1000%. Like, yeah. Like if you have to linger too long and like, well, what about this option? What about this option? I actually so. think I would like run myself into a wall and like make my forehead bleed <laughs> instead of like divergently think about anything yeah so i mean not that there's an answer but obviously it's like i for me as a divergent thinker i try a lot to think about yeah. how can i become a bad like and i and i need to figure out how to like actually do research not on something feel as much stress I, like, impulsively the, do yeah it. and like in my therapy it's been like it's better for me to schedule time for divergent thinking and then have a convergent thinking moment where you're like by this point you have to just make yeah. a decision whereas maybe you would have to force divergent thinking and then you're allowed to make a decision after. Okay, so now let's talk about the cults or communes we've both been in. Okay, so I've been in multiples. You have been in what I actually <laughs> think is a cult, whereas I think, I'm thinking about my camp, and I'm yeah. like, I, because there was a lack of delusion involved. Wait, you think I was in a cult? Uh, yeah, I don't know if we're gonna name it, but there was <laughs> definitely delusion involved. <laughs> um, I don't know how far we're allowed to go or else they're gonna come after us, but. And people are probably like shaking in their boots to know no, more. No, we've talked about this on the pod before. Okay, then we can talk about it. I'm just saying my camp had definitely like a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And I think that was like my issue with it. Which is actually not very common for com like communal living. 
right? Like, yeah. A, like most, um, I mean, we were kids. intentional communities are not hierarchical or try not to be. Yeah. So this was like very hierarchical. This was more like religious cultish because okay, it was like your, a leader. Okay, I'm not, it's <laughs> not true. There was, coming for my cult, I'm yeah, coming for yeah, yours. There was definitely like a leader who definitely like had a lot of power and it was like a little awkward, but also I do feel like it, it was a interesting way I think of camps as benefiting from what communes benefit from. Mm, yeah. You're living with other people, your age, the sh food is shared. I guess we haven't talked about the climate. There's like a climate crisis argument to communes as mm. well. There's a lot of like eco communes right now, which right. are all about focus if on you minimizing do, waste. Yes. You will yeah. minimize waste. If you even just like feed six people instead of four, right. like it's just, it's just, that is true, and I think that's a really important part of us all thinking about living on a commune. Yeah, and sharing even houses and heating and, like, yes. like those, those kind of resources that when it's all clumped together. Like, an apartment is more efficient than a home. Yes, Because yes, it's, like, yes. all working together to house a bunch of people under shared resources. Which I think is interesting. Like, camp, like, where I go to summer camps in Canada, it's so looked at as this like ritual this thing that people have done but it's like it's essentially sending your kid to a commune yeah <laughs> and like well, living I mean, it just kind of depends on your definition it's sending your kid to a community that's for sure but i think there is a difference between an intentional community and a camp obviously you're yeah, not saying you're right. the same an intentional community is going with a very specific intention like if it's like I don't know, like to live in a world that is not hierarchical, to share resources, literally to share all your money, share yeah, all your food. Yeah. Camp is like more like a form of, like it's beautiful. You get some of the best aspects, I think, that intentional communities also get, which is community, which is yeah. friendship, which is trust, which is safety. Um, but it's also a form of babysitting. It's also, a yeah. form of, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. You, it's being no, paid okay. for. You're right. It's not it's an a obvious, service. but I guess Your parents I was like, are like it's, giving money for yeah, it. Yeah, They're paying for sure. It's definitely the closest I've ever come though to, to living on a commune. Yeah. But that's the difference is like even university you're paying for that Actually, experience. University campuses are commune vibes. Yeah. In a way, but I don't, I just wouldn't call it a commune. It's just, it's shared living. That's not the same thing as intentional community. Well, when they were talking in one of the articles about like Hasidic Jewish people and the fact that they can't drive on Sundays, mm -hmm. like obviously that's like a religion It's not necessarily a commune, but it creates their needing to live in a specific area to be able to walk to things on mm. Sundays that they're like, there's something about it that has more of a commune feel, even though they're like in Brooklyn or New York city, okay. they're yeah. still having to design their lives to be able to walk everywhere on one day, which creates like a communal living in a way yeah. which I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah. So I think though that, that people would probably need to argue that there's a difference between these kinds of things, right? Yes. Like especially when one is um, driven by a religious beliefs versus like a communal belief, not to say that they can't intertwine. Like yeah. there is a difference. I think under a lot of these definitions, like for example, even though there are like thousands of um, communes that pop up every year as of 2019, only 222 were like defined as sharing 100% of their income. Huh. So like, it's not totally that yeah. common for people to jump all the way in yeah, and that, say like, yeah. you come here, everything will be provided, but you will also work here for that and not make money. <laughs> okay. So you have definitely lived in a commune then. <laughs> okay, we're not going to name names or anything. I've been in two and one what? was, one was big brother. I feel like in a way it's obviously a television show, but it creates, like you were saying, almost like a traumatic experience. Like a lot of people have been on that show, like end up bonding really deeply after cause they've gone through something like a psychological psychologically traumatic a little bit yeah. yeah that many people don't understand and you're like living together in like really extreme conditions for months like it's it's interesting and the only person who can understand like you had to eat slop <laughs> is like casey <laughs> from alberta who also had to eat exactly slop. um but yeah i was also like in my early days in a little youtube cult it wasn't a cult it was just it, it was it was a commune <laughs> we all lived it, together there was, was like, delusion there was like 18 people lived together working toward like, <laughs> you're still delusional i just don't like to talk about it that much it w and greg is harsh on it <laughs> well because i was observing it it was a cult. well the, the thing that's so cultish about it was like there was this delusional idea that like there was going to be fame and there was going to be money and there was going to be well can't you say that about any business operation i guess then? but for me it felt like it was like for, from my perspective it felt delusional I'm like there's no fame and money coming to this situation and never did come well 
here we are. Bitch. We started ASAP Science there. So <laughs> yeah, I know that's funny. It's funny. It's like I knew it. like it's not even worth talking about. Clearly, he just called me a bitch. <laughs> like, it's like <laughs> it's like okay, it's still alive and well. No, but no, no. It's no. such a unique we experience of your life. I kind of joined this group of like early creators because I thought it was interesting to be. It was like, hype house. Content. Yeah, it was early days hype house. Which even to now, people are probably like, "What is that?" Because that feels so old. But there were like people creating little houses of creators creators like that were making content around YouTube and, and it was very much like you get room and board and food and you don't get paid mm, yeah. or your money has to go into this like it was I mean it wasn't to that degree it was and it wasn't set up in the way that most of these intentional communities are where they're like we're going we're doing this to be separate from society it was more of a business venture. well it was in the <laughs> okay I guess I shouldn't say where it was but it felt separate from society it, it, was, <laughs> in, it was in the GTA in the greater Toronto area okay yeah 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 we're getting into the G the greater part of it yeah fine but like you're so pretentious like just because someone doesn't live in Toronto doesn't mean they're like in the boonies we were in a city of hundreds of thousands of people um, <laughs> but where was I going with that no, we don't need to talk about it that much more longer. I learned a lot from it. But it, to me, that wasn't an intentional community. We weren't creating a community for the sake of community. It was to like actually make content and have the support of other creators around you and potentially working together, using people's skills, using people's equipment. It wasn't like when I made money, I gave it to them. But there was... I thought that was what happens. Well, not my own money, <laughs> no. Like, no, but the money were, that was made in the house. People would do gigs together, and then that would go to yeah. supporting, like, like feeding and housing everyone. It would have like. been interesting to see what would have happened if it kept going. And it does, it does make me realize that hype houses are cults in a way. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. really, like, they're Modern living in cults, one house. Yeah. They're working in a way the money should go back. And then the delusion, if like they're based around a delusion, like I would be really cool to be a fly on the wall in the hype house and watch the delusion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. obviously every once in a while. But you to get... me, those are very hierarchical. It's like who has the most followers and the biggest platform is probably like considered That's the most cult. important. Cults have hierarchies. Yes, but I'm saying intentional communities do not typically. I'm saying hype houses are cults. Okay. To me, like in a way that could be so interesting. Yeah. Like, Okay, like, we're arguing cult versus community. Yeah, yeah, okay. we, yeah. I'm not saying hype houses are communes. Right. There could be a really cool vegan Pythagorean hype house <laughs> going on, like in southern <laughs> Italy, that would be a really interesting commune. I'm saying like the quintessential cult yeah. hype house overlap to me is really interesting because there is delusion, there is power, there is money. And I would love, like, I know they've done some documentaries about hype houses, but like, I really want the fictional written, yeah, like scripted traumatic one, yeah. scripted story like, of the hype house, mm. like a twenty four, like yeah. dark, like mm. Timothy Chalamet, like gets well, his Oscar. You can make it. Well, no, I'm not, I'm not a. I I'm, could make it. I have a little bit. Exactly. Of like there is just something <laughs> so cultish about that that I think is really interesting. Um, I just wanted to sort of wrap up with. The one of the longest running, as I mentioned, non-religious communes. It's known as Twin Oaks. Um, have you heard of it? That sounds cultish to me. But it's not. It's okay. an <laughs> intentional community formed in 1967 in Virginia, USA. Um, it's really rare, apparently, for a non-religious commune to survive this long. Yeah. Like okay. over 30 years. This is obviously even longer. Apparently, they struggled a lot at the beginning, but they've like made it through. There's around 100 adults and 17 children. Um they had to like develop a labor system with credit hours where certain jobs were worth more hours than other jobs because hmm. obviously like not every job is desirable. So it was like hmm. the shittier jobs probably gave you more credits and you know what I mean? Like a system. Yeah. Of, like, yeah. Like work. obviously someone has to scrub the toilet. Um, it still exists. It's free to join no rent or ongoing. Okay. Costs. You're gone. He's out the door. <laughs> I'm like, I've already sent him my application. Um, you must attend a scheduled three week visitor period. And then they take a month to deliberate. If you're allowed in, there is like a way list everyone works 42 hours a week and that gives you like you know housing food clothing health care uh, it is a religiously diverse group it is a relationally diverse group as in some people are monogamous some people are polygamous some people are celibate etc and Whoa. you know they're sharing dorms and stuff it's like you have your own private room but you share like all the other facilities with everyone yeah else. privacy is an interesting thing because i was reading about like copenhagen and like danish kind of like Commune ways living. of living well it's not it's like they've set up these sort of like 
honestly design a lot of its architectural like designs where families like share like the middle like yeah. space mm -hmm. like courtyard but, vibes and it was all about maintaining privacy because it's like you still i think there is separate. a thing about privacy that is going to be really hard for people to get over in quote unquote commune life so like yeah like that was they were sort of saying the danish experiment it's like not yeah. that intense we, but a while back watch almost like a documentary about this or what i <laughs> thought was so fascinating was it wasn't about having necessarily like this crazy egalitarian society, but it was like by living in these apartments, like they would share responsibility of like, you would cook one day a week for everyone. And then that would provide you six days a week where your kids and your family was like fed for, you didn't have to make meals. But mm -hmm. one day a week, you'd have to spend like your whole day cooking for everybody. Yeah. And I was like, that to me is really smart. Like it's a way to share resources instead of was having- Was this to, a Danish concept? I, it might've been in Denmark. It might've been, I, I'm not- It's always in seeing, Denmark. It was probably just like a TV spot that I watched. This is like a decade ago. And I remember that's kind of what turned me on to the idea of like, it doesn't have to be a full commune, but how do you like, work together, they still had their private areas, but then they had shared areas yeah. as well. Um, and I think like there's something to the idea, but as the like Hope who sent a message in um, mentioned, like it may just be the idea of community. How yeah. do we like bring more community exactly. into our current lives without necessarily trying to cut ourselves and off? And it's like, yeah, like if you make more money than your neighbor and you don't want to share it, like, okay, that's going to be hard for you to share it. I get that. Like, and you want your privacy of your family to just like, maybe just like not have to like always be around like Kathy down the street. Yeah. Like yeah, you've yeah. chosen to like <laughs> build a family with people for Like there is something about that where I'm like, we just have to accept yeah. that privacy is important. Yep, that's, I mean, that's kind of it. Oh, I really want but to wait, say. But wait. Oh, oh, no, the one thing I watched in, like, a documentary yeah. about this, them, was that, so they are still, they acknowledge that they're in a capitalist system. They, at one point, were this making. This is the, like, Ohio or whatever yeah, the, commune. Um, what's it called? Twin Oaks. Virginia. They made most of their money by making hammocks and selling tofu. The hammocks were. Selling so, tofu is so at, commune. At, yeah. At one point. Every hammock at Pier One Imports was from this commune, um, but then like demand exceeded what they were capable of. So I think Pier One Imports like now gets them elsewhere. Yeah, made in Bangladesh. That's like what exactly. they were saying the yeah. issue with. So it's that they had to figure out how are we going to like because they use that money to support their commune to support like other needs that other people have. Capitalism. They would make around six hundred thousand dollars per year doing this though. Like this is the Pier One Imports. No, not just that. Like they tofu. <laughs> As it stands, their capitalist endeavors make them six hundred thousand dollars a year, which they use wow. as part of their community. Selling tofu and hammocks to Pier One Imports is hilarious. Yes, yeah. that it's is so on the, nose. <laughs> on the nose. It's so awesome. Also, Pier One Imports, like there was one in my house growing up. Like this Does is still exist? such a sign that I was gay because I would like after school, everyone would be like, let's go to Future Shop and look at video games. And they'd be like, can we pop into Pier 1 first? And I would like, <laughs> I, they'd all be like, sure. To and me, then it was so like, it was, it was so like suburban. It like. was suburban. It was beige, mom. It was like, I, I would just be like, oh, that's kind of a cool duck lamp. And they'd be like, cool. <laughs> can we like go to the video game place yet? And I'd be like, yeah, I guess. But I was just like, fat. and then like, if a birthday for like my mom came along, I'd be like, well, I know where I'm going. And I would like <laughs> really skip for yourself on down yeah. to pier one imports and buy hours. her. Like I would just go down in price until I got her like a tea can <laughs> and gently grazing every wooden crate. Yeah. And then it was just like too much, too much, too much. Every and there was like, lamp turning on and off, but it's gone now. Like I, I haven't thought about pier one yeah. imports until I feel like I don't see it. Any, like anymore. this moment now when it's like, Oh, I wonder how much of like those hammocks I touched were from this call. But, <laughs> but like, it is interesting how in a lot of these studies they talk about capitalism being the biggest barrier to communes. There's something so interesting about the tension between this type of living mm -hmm. and the type of living we're all currently used to in North America. Yeah. Like there's something good about challenging this, about like realizing a single family home with your car, with your suburban life, suburban life is is lonely and it's mm -hmm. damaging and it is anti-capitalist if you can force yourself into a type of community as or commune yeah. living as much as you can knowing that it will always be an insane challenge something that's interesting to me that's like related to this is the idea that like so much of what capitalism sells us is ultimately empty promises and i feel like more people are figuring that out but it's still challenging to stop or to get out of the rat race. Yeah. You know of what I mean? Course, like yeah. so many people learn like, 
and, and maybe many are not privileged enough to have that experience of being like money is actually not bringing me happiness because a lot of people have to get money to survive. But then you hear a lot of people who end up making enough money and then saying like, I actually feel sad and empty. Yeah. Like, have you ever met a rich person? Yeah. They're it's like the least happy oh, people you'll ever meet. They're like the most depressing, yeah. angry, like it's so weird. Every time I met Unless they found their joy elsewhere. Like they, like it's the same with internet success or celebrity success. I think you realize like it's actually really empty, but it's difficult to stop yourself from wanting it until you learn that. Yes. And, yeah. like, firsthand. And that I think is the biggest challenge of like capitalism has truly poisoned all of our minds that until I have to experience it. Like I, yeah. I experienced this myself. It was like until I made a lot of money and realized actually this of course, it's nice to have all my needs yeah. met, but the money part after that doesn't bring you yeah, in fact, mental it's, it's, stability. It's brought you a life where all you have to do is make decisions. And yeah. Hell on earth for you. Um, I don't know. It's just weird that you can't. It's so hard to like get that lesson without actually experiencing it, which makes which everyone is so chase impossible. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, fascinating. Mm -hmm. And thank you to everyone who kind of wrote in and was like, we want an episode on communes. There yeah. it is.